Hello and welcome to the Mass Media Tribe Meetup for February 2021. We have the amazing Nick Cree in the house, who's our guest speaker today from Business Owners Smashing It Online. The Digital Transformer is going to be talking about how to transform your business online today. My name is Alderman Altenay. I am your host this evening. We have some awesome people here from all over the world on the event tonight. So welcome wherever you are joining us from right now. It's an absolute pleasure to have you with us. Now, what this event is about, in case you've never been to a mass media tribe event before, what this is about is helping you get your message out to the masses in a very cost effective way. We have different guest speakers that come along each time. Now, this started actually in 2018. I started this as a physical event on the Gold Coast, and we had a whole lot of guest speakers, amazing events over the years and then COVID hit and I started to do online events. So with the physical events that were held on the Gold Coast and in Brisbane, and it was about 15 to $20 Australian roughly to attend. Uh, and uh, now online, it's all free. And it's been every two weeks, I've been running this event all through last year, through 2020. And this year, it's going to be once a month that we're doing these events. So this is the February one. Very excited with our guest speaker tonight, Nick Cree. I've known him for a long time. He's been around many similar business circles over the last 15 years or so. And we we'll keep bumping into each other at different events. And he's absolutely extraordinary. He runs an amazing event called Business Owners Smashing It Online that he does weekly. And he had a fantastic event actually last night that I hopped on. And he does a whole lot of other stuff too. He's got an amazing VA program and other programs that help people go online and really leverage your business and make the most of your business and your efforts by leveraging online. So for those who don't know much about me, I've had 37 years media experience. I've worked as a photojournalist in TV, radio and print over the years. I have a free publicity secrets event that I run regularly online now. It's a new program I launched uh, just this year. I did two events in January and I have the next event coming up February 23. And I also launched during COVID the Global Good News Challenge, which is currently running. If you want to get involved in that and if you're sick of all the negative news out there, as I am, I am a stand for truth and good news in the media. If you're sick of all the negative news, then you can be the change you want to see in the world and help spread more good news. And the Global Good News Challenge is a way you can do that through Facebook Lives. So every month we have a different challenge. So this month, up until February five, so you've got a few more days to start your five day challenge for February. And you just do a very simple Facebook Live either on your profile or in the Loving Life group, and you just share your name, what you do, three things you're grateful for, and a piece of good news. And it's amazing how powerful that is to lift your energy, lift your vibration, because love and gratitude are the highest vibrations you will feel. And the more you get into that, the more you'll attract opportunities to yourself, and the more you'll have a greater experience of life. Because there's certain things we cannot control in the world, right? Certain things we can't control. And if you focus on those things you can't control, it will potentially drive you crazy and you'll end up potentially depressed and, and worst case scenario, suicidal. And you know, part of why I stand for good news is because I've had depression over the years and I've had four friends who have taken their own lives by the age of 45. And the stats are that a million people a year worldwide take their own lives and that number has increased during COVID. So I think it's really important that we all step up and take responsibility for the messages that we're putting out in social media and also how we're consuming the media. I do believe it's important to question everything you hear in the mainstream media and having worked in the media as a journalist, I can tell you that there are definitely hidden agendas that happen. And there's been times that I've been asked to go and get angles on stories by the editor that were not there to get, right? So there's definitely hidden agendas going on. There's all sorts of information, misinformation, fake news uh, that happens, unfortunately, in mainstream media. So it's important to be aware of that and to question what you hear and do your own research so that you can make informed choices about how you are consuming the news and come back to gratitude as much as possible. So that's a little bit of my background. I am known as the media queen and that is about stepping up and stepping out with your message and celebrating your uniqueness. Your X factor is your story. No one else out there has your story. 
And if you want to build your fame, your fortune, your freedom and leave a legacy, then it's important to be open to sharing your story and really leveraging what you do and making a bigger impact in the world. So if that's what you want to do, then the media is your answer to do that. And I'm here to support you through that journey. And that's what the Mass Media Tribe is about too. It's a supportive community where we support each other with sharing links in events such as this. Also, you're welcome to promote yourself and your business in our Mass Media Tribe group too. If you want to get involved in the Global Good News Challenge, there is a Facebook page called Global Good News Challenge. All the details on how to get involved are pinned to the top of the page. And a lot of people are using it as a way to promote their good news at the end of their gratitude. So they share, share their name, what they do, three things they're grateful for. Then with the good news, often people are promoting what they're up to. So they're promoting good news in their business, good news in their life, good news that they've heard around them. Or you can access a whole lot of good news now online too through websites such as the Good News Network. We have some Sunny Skies News. We have news.com.au that has a, a good news section there. There's a happy newspaper in the UK that went viral. So there's all sorts of alternative media now that has come about uh, and that you can access a whole lot of positive news. So it just depends on what you're focusing on and what you're looking out for with the news. So I suggest do your research on that one too. And there's a whole lot of truth media out there too, giving alternative points of view. So it is a, a very exciting time with the world of the media. And out of the 7.8 billion people on the planet now, we have 3.8 billion active social media users. 3.8 billion. So that's nearly half the world's population now, active social media users, which is very exciting news because what's happening now is that people are creating the news and journalists are looking to social media every single day for story ideas. So it's very important that you look at your social media marketing strategies and the messaging you're putting out there because you could well pick, be picked up for a story if you share something interesting in your social media. So that's a bit about the Mass Media Tribe. Now, I'd love to hear from you on the live Zoom room here today. And if you are watching this on Facebook, you're welcome to come and join us at any point during the next two hours. We're going till about 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. And you're welcome to hop on the Zoom. Just go to Eventbrite, register there, uh, search Aldwin all today on Eventbrite. You'll see the event listed. And we've got registrations open for the next hour and a half. So if you are on the live Zoom, you can introduce yourself and you have the chance to win prizes at the end. So what I'd love to do now is go around the Zoom room. For anyone who wants to share, you don't have to. You can always pass if you don't want to share, but this is a great opportunity to promote yourself. So I would like to invite you now and open up if you would like to introduce yourself and just say your name, where you're from, what you do, and what you want to get out of tonight. So the topic is transform your business online. And who would like to go first? Who would like to share? Paul, I can see you're unmuted there. Would you like to yeah, go first? Yeah, no problem at all. So I'm Thank Paul you. Spencer, I'm from, from UK, I'm a private investigator. Um, I have a promotion dichotomy, which means um, I have two things pulling me in two different directions. I, I need to stay reasonably quiet um, because of what I do, but also I need to promote my business. So I'm looking for any sort of inspiration that will guide me in that direction. Fantastic, Paul, love it. Thank you so much and thank you for going first. That's very brave of you, great no work. Wow, oh, fantastic. You. And how did you hear about tonight, Paul? Um, it was a LinkedIn event. I thought it looked really interesting. On LinkedIn. Wonderful. Fantastic. So it's probably your first night, is the first Mass Media Tribe event you've been to? It is. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Fantastic. Is anyone else here the first time here tonight? Can I just see a show of hands or, yep, Paul, welcome. Uh, two Pauls. First, first for two Pauls here tonight from the other side of the world. <laughs> Angie, first time for you. Welcome. Welcome to the Mass Media Tribe community. Fantastic. Please do join us on Meetup and Facebook in our groups there so we can continue the conversation. Brendan, first time. Welcome. So we can continue after this and stay connected and support each other. Everything in life is about relationships, right, and building relationships. And you just never know, who knows, people that could be absolutely pivotal for your life or your business. It could just be one connection that could help take you from you know chugging along in life to, to just going exponential right it could just be one connection and you just don't know who people know and it's just all building relationships so here's your chance tonight it's a quality group here tonight and I know we have some amazing people in our community outside 
of here as well. So welcome to our first timers and welcome to all those who are returning. Who else is returning here? Who's returning? I know Jay, we've seen you. Yes, Michael, Nick, beautiful. Rod, you're returning. Fantastic. Alfred, of course, been to quite a few. Wonderful. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. Paul Spencer from the UK going first. And who would like to go next? Michael, yes. Michael and then Paul. <coughs> so just Michael, just share, just share your name, where you're from, what you do and what you want to get out of time. Thank you. Thanks, Alwyn. Mike Palmer is my name. Um, Essential Business Solutions is my, my business. What I do is help new business people survive and prosper in their first year so they don't become part of the 90% plus statistic that don't. What I hope to get out of tonight is I want to make the best of my digital marketing efforts. Brilliant. So Fantastic, I'm, I'm Michael. From, from before that Nick is the key to all that. Yes, he is absolutely the key. He is the golden key and the golden opportunity to everything online. He is awesome. <laughs> So you are in the right. No pressure, right? Yeah, no, no pressure. No pressure, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> we have great expectations. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Thank you for sharing. And Paul, over to you. Yes. Thanks, Alderman. Uh, my name's Paul Sheaf. I'm from Paul's Productions, uh, based in the southern part of Sydney. Uh, I shoot people with a cannon, this one here. Um, and my covot, which is a COVID pivot, um, early last year was not to move away from corporate and business uh, websites and uh, conference seminars, but to add something I had done for a very long time uh, that wasn't on the menu, and that was to film and live stream funerals, memorial services and special services because of the COVID, because I just love helping people. And that's high on my uh, list of things that I just want to continue. And uh, the challenge for me now, it was you know, six to eight months ago, I built an extra page onto my website and, and I just need to keep promoting that um, so that people know the value of having those type of um, events, services streamed and recorded for their loved ones. So, That's one, yeah, wonderful. I just need wonderful to service. push out further into the, into the digital marketplace than because uh, all my other stuff, I've been established there for over 20 years. But this is relatively new. Fantastic. And it just goes to show sometimes you, you know, need to ebb and flow with the times, right? Yep. And online is definitely mm -hmm. the way to go. And I mean, the Zoom platform tripled its business mm -hmm. in March. Oh, yeah. Um, so oh, it just it last year. <laughs> Yeah, it just went crazy, right? Zoom went crazy. And so many other online platforms, massive opportunity online right now. So it's perfect mm -hmm. that you're here, Paul. And you were at the Free Publicity Secrets event recently. I was last weekend or the one the one a bit back, yes. yes. Uh, and that was awesome, full day event. And I, I really thought, oh, how, are we, how are we going to cope um, with a whole day? But I'll tell you what, I was engrossed all day. Um, yeah, so if anyone hasn't done that with all of them, uh, the new one coming up that's half a day yes. um yeah you know, it's going to fit a dozen eggs into a pack of a half, half a dozen pack mm. <laughs> yes the condensed version and you've been on radio recently paul so congratulations I, yes i was on radio um out in liverpool it's a, it was a community radio station uh, i had been there about a year and a half earlier talking about my conferences seminars and website videos and and that part of the digital world um, so this was about my cobot, uh, and uh, yeah, so I had an hour session there. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, and I, I took my cameras along, and uh, they invited me to if I wanted to, and I could uh, set them up at my new, the uh, their studio is smaller than my dining room, and <laughs> uh, three people, a desk, and and their gear, and and two cameras and a light. Um, but I've got it. I just need to get around to finishing editing, editing it. That's going to be a challenge because we're having so much fun. And when they were playing a song, we were still having a you know, gas bag and a giggle. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll keep, Fantastic. keep that in. So, yeah, yeah. So, so that was my second ever um, radio gig. And it was sort of very timely because it was around the time I did that um, workshop with uh, Alden too. So. 
Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well done, Paul. That's excellent. And so, you know, great point there. If you do get radio interviews or TV interviews, make sure you get photos of it to share on your yeah. social media. It's one of the strategies I teach to make the most of your media appearances. Make sure you get the photos to mm -hmm. then maximise that and get it out. Fantastic, Paul. Thank you so much for sharing. Paul Sheaf from Sydney. Okay, Angie has said she wants to go next. So, Angie, would you like to unmute yourself? Hello. Hello. Before I start, I just thought I'd um, thank you for putting this on. I'm actually really excited for tonight and um, I do apologize for not being able to show my face. <laughs> but um, my, uh, my business is called Pear Collections and we are a new fashion brand that specifically creates garments um, myself. I design everything um, and then I get them produced for pear-shaped and curvaceous women. And um, we have just launched our stylist, stockist, and affiliate marketing programs to help support fellow small businesses within Australia. And um, tonight, I just want to kind of meet new people, learn some extra strategies from you and Nick, and uh, have a good night learning some things that I might not already know to uh, help for the new fashion brand. Wonderful, Angie. And where are you coming to us from? Oh, yes, I am in Benora Point, um, just about five minutes south of the Gold Coast in the New South Wales area. Oh, oh Benora Point. I, was, I grew up in Mullumbimby and Brunswick Heads just down the creek from there. Oh, it's a beautiful area. Right now I'm actually yeah. sitting out on my porch watching the sunset. Mm. Oh, stunning. And where's your accent from, Angie? Yes, I am Canadian, but I have lived here for almost nine mm -hmm. years, and so my accent is quite muddled now. <laughs> ah, I love it. I love it. I think you've got a great accent there, Angie. Oh, I can hear you all you. night. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Angie. Thank you for sharing a welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Now, who would like to go next? Who would like to share your name, what you do, where you're from, and what you want to get out of tonight? Who would like to share? Just put your hand up or unmute yourself. Jay, over to you. Hi, I'm a counsellor and a coach from Western Australia and I am keen to help people with their wellbeing and really interested in um, inspiration for moving online as well. Thanks. Fantastic. Excellent. Jay from WA, beautiful. Thank you so much. Short and sweet there. Great to see you again, Jay. And Alfred, I saw you put your hand up. You just unmute yourself there. Our Dr. Alfred Zerfus, amazing guy I've known for many years. We met in Thailand many years ago, done some media work together. Welcome, Alfred. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm uh, Fred, actually. Um, uh, I'm a young, I'm a singing young oldie. Uh, and I've started the program to get people to sing to each other a lot more. Uh, songs of love, gratitude, affection, uh, and singing about issues, making little songs, uh, because I think that songs should permeate our culture, uh, and it helps us to unify each other and prevent a lot of problems. Mm. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Well done, Alfred. Love your work. Yeah. And you keep saying you're 84 years young. Is that correct? Still 84 years young? Yeah, something like that. Something yeah. like that. 84 <laughs> years young. And he's a trooper. He just, Alfred, he's got so much, so much that he does and, and just so exciting to see everything you get up to, Alfred. You're truly inspirational. Thank you. With what yeah, you do. You <laughs> and a passionate animal lover too, against glue traps, the cruelty of glue traps as well. So thank you for the great work you do with that too, Alfred. Thank you. Excellent. Well, welcome, welcome. Now, I saw uh, someone else put their hand up. Who else put their hand up there? Uh, Rod, would you like to share? Or Brendan? Rod? Okay, over to yeah. you, Rod. Hi, Aldrin. Thanks very much for the, the uh, webinar we had a couple of days ago. That was excellent. Um, Thank you. I'm, I'm Rod Lovell. I'm from a little known place called South Australia. Um, not many people know about this. It's an untapped uh, jewel. It really is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm on this, I, I've written a book about an aircraft accident and the, um, and the repercussions that I had about 27 years ago. My book has been incredibly successful from what I've seen. I'm an unknown author who's self-published and I'm blown away, but I want to take it further. And uh, this is why I'm, I've joined Auburn and um, I want to take it a whole lot further. I think it can go a lot further. And so I've... Uh, 
I'm here to learn and uh, hopefully take them on board and, and go to the next level by a big way. So thanks for your help. Thank you, Rod. And your story is truly inspirational as well. You have an amazing book. Maybe we can see a copy of your book uh, towards the end of this uh, session. Um, have a look at that. And if people want to get a copy of your book, maybe put a, put a link in the chat because it is amazing. And uh, Jax Malilli, who some people might know, was involved with that whole project. So, um, yeah, really amazing what you've gone through there. A great story there, Rod. Thanks, Alvin. And, and again, just what you said, I couldn't do this on my own. And this is why I'm sort of engaging with you now and Jackie and other people who are far better than me at producing a, uh, a an excellent product. So like, um, what was his name? Richard Branson said, always hire people smarter than yourself. So it's a way to go. So thank you. Yes, absolutely. Stay in your lane as they say. Do what you love to do and outsource the rest. And if you want to know how to outsource effectively, Nick is your guy. He's just put together a VA program recently. He's got a heap of VAs and he's the absolute expert in that area. Fantastic. Rod from South Australia. Welcome, welcome. And the only person we haven't heard from is Brendan. Brendan, would you like to share or are you passing tonight? Just to unmute yourself if you can hear us. We can't see you, but we know you're there. Could be in the bathroom you could be eating i have no idea you could be running around naked um you know the mind boggles doesn't it when we think about what are people up to on these zoom calls <laughs> uh, anyway brendan that's okay if you don't want to share all good uh, or you can just pop in the chat just pop in uh you know where you're from what you do and any links that you want to share there in the zoom room okay i am going to share my screen now thank you so much everyone for sharing and I'm going to share my screen and do a short presentation on how to gain free publicity to give you a bit of a taste test of what I do. And then we will go over to Nick Cree to talk about transforming your business online for the rest of the session today. So we have about another 80 minutes or so ahead of us. So if you are on Facebook, come and join us on the live Zoom room. Just register through Eventbrite and you'll get the Zoom link emailed to you. All righty. Here we go, sharing the screen now. Okay, there we go. All right, can you see that okay? All right, can everyone see that? Can you see that and hear me? Yes, okay, I can see some nods. Okay, beautiful. All right, so we are at the Mass Media Tribe Meetup. I'm going to give it quick segment here on how to gain free publicity. Now I am known as the media queen. I have got 37 years media experience. I know I don't look a day over 25. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> I am actually 47. I just turned 47. And I actually first featured in the media at age 10 for table tennis. I was a top junior table tennis player in Sydney. And then at 11, I was on Cartoon Connection on Channel 7. And then I did a radio show at Radio Manly Warringah at 13. And I went on to work in the media in TV, radio, print over the next 20 something years, freelance for magazines all over the world. I've done acting and film work as well. So I've worked really in all facets of the media and I'm very active in social media. I have about 70,000 social media followers now and I'm really passionate about helping to share more truth and good news out in the world. So that's what I do. And I am all about helping people also step up and shine bright with what they do and stop being the world's best kept secret, right? And become the star that you are. And this is the journey that people go on when they come to work with me. What happens is that people do start right here as the world's best kept secret. Now, the good news is for you is that anyone who is known as anyone nowadays, all celebrities, all politicians, all the big names out there, they were all once upon a time the world's best kept secret. So if you're feeling right now like the world's best kept secret, it's okay because you have to start somewhere, right? And this is the second step in the rocket ship journey here is you make a start and 50% of anything you do is just starting. So making a start, coming to an event like this, finding out more about how to get free publicity, how to get your message out, how to transform your business online, which will then help you get publicity as well as you expand and grow. So make a start and people, you know, come, they learn about it. They might get a press release out and then they get some steady progress. They might get some local media coverage, uh, you know, get in a local newspaper or get on local community radio, which is generally the easiest media you will get is your local media. And when you do approach the local media, make sure you mention what suburb you're from because local media are always looking for local people doing great things. 
And then you start to shoot for the stars. You think, oh, I want to go for a morning show now on TV. I want to go for a major podcast or you know, shoot for the stars. And you're now building your confidence in your media journey. You're starting to get some big runs on the board. You're reaching millions of people potentially with your message, with the traditional media outlet, as well as the social media and websites that those media outlets have, because all TV, radio, print outlets have their online channels that they also go out to, right? They are trans they have transformed their business online. If they're in business now in the media, they have definitely transformed online. And then next thing they know, they have become a star. And that is the journey and it's possible for everyone. And you might want not want to be famous like Hugh Jackman or Russell Crowe or Cindy Lauper, people I've had the fortune to interview over the years, you may not want to be like that, but you might want to be a star in your industry. You might want to be known as the best in your industry, and you might just want to make a bigger difference out in the world as well. So this will definitely help you do that by stepping up with your message and your story. Now, there's certain keys to success you will need on this journey. Now, one is passion. Okay, It's very important that you are passionate about what you do. And if you're not passionate about what you do, then I recommend that you look at how you can do more of what you love and outsource the rest, right? Stay in your lane because you'll have a greater experience of life. You're gonna love what you do more and you'll, you'll stay with it. You know, a lot of businesses that fail, as Mike knows here, a lot of them that fail are not passionate about what they do and they have not leveraged and they have not outsourced enough and they're doing maybe too much themselves and they're not in their passion. And if you don't love what you're doing, if you're just doing something for the money, then you generally will not last in it. You, you need to have that, that drive and love of what you do. Next thing is purpose. Next key here for success in your media journey is purpose, having a clear purpose on what it is you want to achieve with your media campaign or even with your life. What is your life purpose? What is your why, as Simon Sinek says, right? What is your why? Why are you on the planet? What sort of difference do you want to make? how do you want to be remembered at your funeral that's a great question to ask and did you know that the biggest regret people have when they die is living a life not true to themselves now the stats are that a third of all people die by the age of 65 if you look at your age right now you know that life goes so damn fast as we know and you know often people procrastinate and put things off and it's often fear-based when that happens and so it's important to, you know, face your fear and take action anyway. And, you know, you're either going to come from love or fear in the world, I say. So come from love as much as possible. Next key you'll need is to package up what you do effectively. Now, when it comes to getting free publicity, you will need a press release and you will need some good visuals to go with your press release. And you then need to pitch it effectively to the media. So that's part of the package there. And also part of the package is making sure that that is professionally done. Now you can get publicity without a press release, but you increase the chances of a journalist getting the facts wrong because journalists have a five-year burnout. They're very, very stressed people. And if you don't make their job easy for them, then what will happen is that they will just not value what you give them. They will see it as too commercial. Often press releases end up in the bin if they're not written professionally, like a journalist would write them. So you need a great press release to build a, build a really good first impression with journalists and for them to want to keep coming back to you as the expert because they will know if you, if you approach the media in a professional manner and they can see, journalists can see that you know what you're doing with what you're putting out there, and they will absolutely love you and they will keep coming back to you when they're looking for an expert in your field. And that's happened with many of my clients over the years. That's exactly what they've done. I've had my media business now, AA Expose Media, since 2002 on the Gold Coast. I've had clients from all over the world in all sorts of different industries. So these strategies I'm showing you today work for any business anywhere around the world. Then profile. What happens when people Google you? What are they going to find? What happens when you Google yourself? Have you found some interesting information out there? Are you Googleicious, as they say? <laughs> are you Googleicious? And this is important because if you're building a profile and a brand, people are going to Google you and what are they going to find? And this is why it's important to be on social media and to have a good online presence, which we're talking about today, to look at your profile, and boosting your profile and having consistent messaging right across the board. And then people, everything is in relationship, relationships, whether it's media you're approaching, whether it's people on this networking event tonight, it's all about people and relationships, right? And as I say, you can be just one great contact away from things going exponential for you. One key contact could make all the difference in your life and your business. 
And then there's a process to getting free publicity, which I will show you in just a moment. Um, okay, I can't find my wand. I do have a magic wand. <laughs> oh, I put it over, put it over. I'll grab the magic wand later. There's a process to getting publicity and I have my magic media wand, which I'll show you after this and show you the process of getting publicity. And then the last one is propel. Once you get the publicity, then maximizing that and making the most of your media coverage that you get online and offline to really make the most of that and utilize that marketing again and again. Because the thing is, once you appear on TV and radio or print, once you appear once, you can use that forever in your marketing. And a lot of people aren't doing this. You can use those logos. You can say you as seen on TV or you know, you can use that in your marketing and make a really big difference that way too. So this is my awesome media magic formula. It stands for awesome. And the awesome is A is for articulate your story. So before you go out to the media, it's really important to think about what is it that you want to promote? And this could change through time. It might be a new book launch. It might be something new in your business, something unique that you're doing personally. It might be your personal story that you want to share. It might be a charity that you want to impact. So what is it that you want to promote and this is really part of the foundation of your media campaign so a is articulating your story and looking at what it is you want to promote next thing then is to work the angles the w of the awesome is working the angles and media work with angles all the time so having a good angle or a good hook that the media will love is really crucial as well as part of this and then the next step is then elevating your profile in the e the or of the awesome steps elevate your profile this is when you package up what you do with the press release the visuals the photos etc and then the s is startle the media and so richard branson is great at this he's known as the pr stunt king and he was great at getting the media's attention dressing in a uh, a wedding dress to launch the Virgin Brides venture. He dressed in a, in a space suit for the Virgin Galactic venture. Uh, so how can you make what you do creative and fun? Because the media don't just want to educate anymore. They want to entertain as well. So being colorful, creative, having fun with what you do is really important to maximize your media coverage. And then the O of the Awesome Steps is own your power building confidence in what you do, having confidence in what you do. And, you know, just get that if you know 10% more than someone else, you can teach it, okay? You don't have to know everything on a topic to actually step up and speak up about it. And this is where a lot of people are their own worst enemies when it comes to this, that they think, oh, who am I to share? Or, you know, oh, I don't, my story is not that great. And, you know, often people are just too close to their story to realize how amazing they are. Many clients I work with, I, I, you know, I just, I'm, I'm just going, wow, 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 all the time, because there's so many amazing stories that they have that they don't, not even conscious that they have. So if you think in your own life right now, what are some challenges that you've overcome? And if you're a human being, you would have had a few challenges, right? So think about what are some of the lowest points you've had in your life and how have you come out the other end of that? And there'll be some amazing learnings in that. There'll be learnings about how did you start your business? Why is it you do what you do? Why are you passionate about what you do? There'll be a story behind all of that. So, so just dig a bit deeper and be open to discovering what are some of the gems of your story? And owning your power and doing the inner work too to build your confidence in yourself. And the more media you get, the more confidence you will have in what you do. And then M is master interviews. And there's certain things to do before, during and after interviews, which I cover in my free publicity secrets event. And this is really crucial. One of the key things I'll give you today is when you're going to interviews, think about what are three key points that you wanna share in that interview. Okay, three key points. And there's certain tricks and tips to work around difficult questions that journalists might ask and coming back to what you wanna share. So mastering interviews is crucial to maximize your media coverage. And then E is explode impact, making the most of your coverage to then leverage that and reach a lot more people and build your credibility, your authority. You'll naturally get more leads and sales in your business. And these are the benefits. You will have more fame in your life. You might be famous in your industry. You will definitely increase your fame factor. You will have more money. You will attract clients to yourself. You'll attract more money to yourself as you build your profile. And you will have more freedom as well as you build your business and, and build what you do, particularly if you're building online and leveraging as Nick is going to share tonight. And you will also be able to leave a legacy and that's my favorite one every time you get media coverage you are leaving a legacy 
every single time. So it's just absolutely wonderful. It's so great to see all the podcasts out there and the online TV shows happening nowadays. Uh, you know, there's, a, there's over a million podcasts just in America alone. One million podcasts, all looking for people to interview, right? So there's plenty of opportunities out there for you to get coverage and also to start your own online podcasts and TV shows. I've got Media Queen TV on YouTube. I've got over 550 videos on there now. And if you haven't subscribed, I've got some amazing interviews. So please do subscribe to that Media Queen TV on YouTube. And for others on this, uh, this call today, please share your, your YouTube channels if you have some and links so we can support you. And in Mass Media Tribe 2 in the Facebook group, please share, share your links in there as well. Free Publicity Secrets is coming up and this is the website to go to to register. There's freeprsecrets.com. It's free to attend if you want a copy of the slides and recordings. It's just $19.95. There's an option in there to get the VIP package. Uh, but if you just want to come along for free and you don't want the recordings and the slides, then just hop along there. Both options are there in freeprsecrets.com. Love you to join me on the 23rd of February is the next event. It's a Tuesday and 9 to 1 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Okay, that's the next date. And I'd love you to come along. I had a few people saying a day is a, a long time for an event, although everyone who attended said they loved the content. Uh, but I'm actually just condensing it now all into a half day because I know people are busy and I want to make it easy for you to attend this and get the most out of it. And also come and join us at the Mass Media Tribe groups on Facebook and Meetup. If you haven't already, here it is again, freeprsecrets.com. Just go in there and register and I would love to see you there. It's going to be done in the meeting format this time, not in webinar format. So we are going to see your faces. If you want to share, it will be done in that format. And I, I, I prefer that having trialled the two formats of the, the webinar and the and the meeting, I, I like to see people's faces. So that's why I'm doing meeting. And I think it's more engaging when we can see who we're talking to as well. I also have a mass media mastery program that I launched last year, which is available on my website. You can have a look at aaxpose.com. That's my media business website. And just go to services and go mass media mastery there. If you want to work more one-on-one -on -one with me, that's one way you can do that. So check that one out too. That could be an option for you. Or if you want to book in a chat with me and have a chat about where you're at with your business, uh, if you have any questions, then please do reach out. Now we have the Global Good News Challenge continuing, as I mentioned earlier, the February one is a five day challenge, easy peasy, Facebook Live challenge, all details are pinned to the top of the Global Good News Challenge Facebook page, and you just do a simple Facebook Live, share your name, what you do, three things you're grateful for, and a piece of good news for every day of the challenge starting anytime between now and February 5. Okay, and make sure you hashtag Global Good News Challenge so we can then share that into the Global Good News Challenge Facebook page. And anyone who becomes a Good News Crusader as well who does a challenge, we are adding to a private group as well called the Global Good News Challenge Group. And my goal is to have a thousand people in this group and a thousand people who have done Global Good News Challenges by the 8th of the 8th this year, which is a Good News Day. It's the fourth annual Good News Day that I set up on the 8th of the 8th, 18. And it's also my niece's birthday. So it's a special day and it's, a, and it's also a lucky number in Chinese. So eight's a great number. And just imagine the impact on the world if we're all sharing more good news and gratitude. And imagine how great you'll feel when you share your gratitude and you share your good news. It's amazing how it just shifts your energy. Such a simple thing. Most people doing it in about three minutes. And I've had many people say to me, like Nanny Carolina Chasen, for example, from LA, she's done quite a lot of them. She said she misses it whenever the challenge isn't on. I said, well, you can keep the challenge going if you like. You can do this every day if you like. This is just giving you an incentive to do it for a few days in the month. The world is your oyster. And I would like to leave you with this and remind you that you are extraordinary. You're one in a billion just by being born. And I want you to know that I believe in the power of one and I believe in you. May your flame burn bright and light up all those around you. And that's what you do when you step up, you're lighting up those around you. So thank you so much for, um, for hopping on and listening to that. I'd love to hear just a few comments. What did you get out of that presentation? I have done this several times online and I never know what's gonna quite come out of my mouth and what I share anytime I present this content. So uh, would anyone like to share just something they got out of that presentation before we go over to Nick? 
just uh, unmute yourself if you're on the live Zoom, just or put your hand up, unmute yourself. What's something you got out of that so we can share the love here on the live Zoom? Hopefully you were all uh, listening. <laughs> Who'd I'll, like to I'll share? Say, I'll say something if um, no one else sure. is. Sure, I, Angie, thank you. Yeah, I absolutely love the idea of the sharing the like good news, happy news concept. I do a special social media post every couple of days where I share and if just an affirmation to my community. And um, it's just a little way of sending that positivity continually throughout. And um, usually that gets shared and it's one of those things that our community looks forward to. So I really love that idea that you do. Awesome, Angie. Well, I'd love you to participate. I'd love you to be involved. So if you would like to join in, join the Global Good News Crusaders, uh, just uh, go to the Global Good News Challenge Facebook page and three minutes a day is all it takes. About as long, as long as brushing your teeth, you can get one of these challenges done and you will just shift your state, shift your state for the day. Thank you so much, Angie, for sharing. Thank you. And that's great, the work you're doing too, by the sound of it. Uh, Paul, you. yes, Paul, Paul Spencer. Yeah, I, I heard you say that you have 70,000 um, yes. followers on. Yes. Can I ask you if you've surveyed those people about you and your brand and what they think? Have you, have you tried to do that? No, I think that's a great idea, though, surveying people about myself and my brand. I, I do know that I have very mixed reports out there about my Media Queen logo. And in fact, I was in LA about the caricature brand, well, the Media Queen brand with the, the cartoon you can see there in my background. I was in LA with two film producer friends and they both said that cartoon is really ugly. It does not look like you. We're going to go and get you a proper cartoon. <laughs> and we went to Disney and they, they had this little princess kind of media queen done. And while it was very pretty, it was not representing what I stand for in my business. And so the yeah. media queen is about celebrating your uniqueness. So I've got big hair. I've got a big smile. Okay, my nose isn't quite that big, but it's also <laughs> about having fun with what you do and not taking yourself too yeah, seriously. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. Sure, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, I had mixed reports. Mm. That's a huge amount of followers. And if you surveyed them, I'm guessing you'd get some very critical feedback, which would help you to grow your business. Yes. And, and that's the thing is everyone has an opinion. And, yeah. <laughs> and I, I actually put, I had the two cartoons done. I put them on Facebook and I said, what do you think? And I had hundreds of comments come back. Some like this cartoon, some like the Barbie doll. So like, it was just so many different opinions that came through. And in the end, I thought, you know what? I'm going to go with what I like. Right? Yeah, no, no, sure. And, Absolutely. If it's working, what... well, is it, it's obviously working because you've got 70,000 followers. So yeah that's, yeah that's what it's about isn't it you know yeah yeah but you know i'm always open to feedback and suggestions but i think at the end of the day you know you can have multiple business mentors and multiple ideas from others and at the end of the day you have to do what feels right for you yeah, you have sure. to be be true to yourself at the end of the day because people can only give opinions from what they know from from their own experience and and everyone yeah. is sort of subjective as to what they like the style they like angie's in fashion she knows there'll be people that love some fashion and other people hate it right um sure. you know some people love nick's top and some people hate it you know some absolutely <laughs> you know 100 like, percent yeah, correct right there <laughs> yeah exactly right you're always going to get you're always going to get differences of opinion so um however you know feedback is fantastic and i think uh, you know particularly with the content that you put out i think it's really important to get feedback and and you know adjust the content to suit the clients as much as possible and you know serve people's um you know problems or challenges as much as you can because, you know, in business, it's all about helping people solve problems, isn't it? So the more sure. problems you can solve, the more business you will have. So, yes, great point, Paul. And no, I haven't done a specific survey, but hey, I'm, I'm always open to any feedback or suggestions on anything that I do. So, great. so yeah, great, great point. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul from the UK and Alfred from Melbourne. Yeah, hi. Yeah, I agree with Paul. I think that's a great idea and all with. And I repeat the fact that we have to, we are all unique. And we all have to be ourselves and believe in ourselves and, and go our ways, uh, our passions. Um, so I think that's terribly important. I might mention one thing. Sure. Uh, I reviewed, I went and uh, Googled core values. Uh -huh. And I found out my three top core values. And these are things that really are not necessarily apparent, but they're underlining what your passions are about. And I suggest you Google core values. Okay. Check it out. 
and that you'll get a survey and they'll give you some feedback. Okay, great. Core values. Yeah, awesome. Well, that's that's it. We, we, we act in line with our values, don't we? Right. And Dr. John Demartini talks a lot about this. He's if you if anyone knows Dr. De, you know Demartini, the Demartini method looks at you know looks at values and he looks at you know any complaint you have about anyone else, any character trait that you complain about, there will be a part of you that has been that at some point, right? Well, so it's about. Um, I'll just add something. I'm I'm an ex public health doctor, and uh, my core values are humour, curiosity, and innovation. And that confirmed the fact that I've always wanted to be a stand-up comedian. Ah, uh, yeah, fantastic. Well, you would make a great stand-up comedian. Now I'm having a lot of fun at my age because all they can say is, oh, he's just old. You know, <laughs> away with anything these days. <laughs> you get away with a lot more, Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Alfred, from Melbourne. Excellent. Anyone else want to share what they got from the last session before we move on to Mr. Nick Cree? Anyone else no, want to share? Yes, Rod. Can I talk on feedback? Um, sure. I do things differently to a lot of people, as you may or may not know. Um, remember I said I self-published and I didn't go through a traditional publisher. Now, if yes. you go through a tra traditional publisher and you uh, try and contact the author, the publisher keeps the, the author and, and the, um, the reader apart. You, you can't contact. Now, I've done something entirely different. I, as you know, I self-publish. I send my books online from home. And in the front of every book, I put a business card with all my contact details. So the people love it. They can ring me, they can email me. And that's where I get the feedback. And I'm, I'm finding it incredibly encouraging, empowering, and just absolutely fantastic. So for me, I, whenever I sell a book, I, I encourage feedback. And that is good really good yeah that's wonderful right and i must say one thing that frustrates me when i get on a website if there's no phone number and you've just got an opt-in form that really annoys me and you know we're talking about transforming your business online you know you want to be reachable and the thing is now too there's so many online scammers out there so you know if you've got a phone number to call you immediately have an increased trust factor don't you exactly. you can actually pick up the phone and, and you know you're dealing with an actual human being and not not a bot right <laughs> exactly a real person and it is so nice to talk to a real person so absolutely that's awesome rod well done i like that idea put a business card in with your book excellent mm. i like it i like it okay brilliant well let's let's go over to the amazing nick cree now uh, now nick is always so insightful so insightful i always learn so much from nick he's he's just a wealth of knowledge and he's always got a smile and he's always just a wonderful man to be around and gives so much value to people in his community the business owners smashing it online event is brilliant if you've never been on it, it happens every week and uh, there's other events that nick does as well which he can share so it's with absolute pleasure now that i introduce please welcome the amazing nick Cree to talk about Transform Your Business Online here at Mass Media Tribe Meetup. Hey, over to you, Nick. Well, there's uh, something to live up to there. No pressure at all, once again. <laughs> and I'm relieved to uh, hear you say that you only need to know 10% more to uh, be the expert. So uh, <laughs> I've probably got one or 2% more. So uh, hopefully those gems are going to be enough for, for tonight. <laughs> so, uh, and so good to see um, uh, everyone here. Some I've met before, some I haven't met before. And uh, in order to get to know you a wee bit better, uh, I've been checking out your websites as well too. So, um, and that just helps me to uh, have a look at where you are and what you're doing and uh, have a look at some of the uh, opportunities for uh, your digital transformation uh, online. So there's no bad websites. There are just incomplete websites. And uh, I have not seen a website yet that is ever complete. So you only get up to about 80% and uh, things change, you change, products change, COVID comes, COVID goes, you know, all of those sort of things really uh, impact and change what you're doing online. So the, um, uh, so the topic of uh, digital transformation, that is, a, that is a word that large business use. Uh, and it's a process that uh, often corporates have used. So larger businesses and corporates have used uh, which describes the way that they take what they do on a, in a storefront and bring that uh, online. So, uh, so you probably noticed that, uh, say, supermarkets, uh, large chain stores, over the past uh, you know, six or seven years uh, has really been the time that uh, they have brought their presence online 
and more than just a brochure. So, and being online, a digital transformation is conducting business online. So it means actually selling things. Uh, that's really what a digital transformation is. And um, so, and I think uh, the uh, the last year, so 2020 with COVID has uh, really accelerated uh, people's desire to get online um, because they have had no option. So that is both business and uh, consumers. So uh, I dare say in the um, in the UK, it's probably accelerated a lot uh, a lot more than it has here in Australia, uh, because uh, you know things are sort of you know quite different over there than they are um, here in Australia. So, but the principles are all the same, and uh, and I think that. Uh, the savvy businesses uh, that have been around, uh, you know, like pre this time, the ones that have been doing really well uh, have often been the online business. In fact, the biggest businesses in the world today are online businesses. So you've got uh, Google, you've got Facebook, uh, you've got Microsoft, you've got Apple. So there's, there's all the tech, tech companies, which are our, our, our biggest companies uh, in the world. Um, the, um, and so uh, when you look at what they do, uh, they um, they really have embraced the technology, uh, some and some of them make the technology as well too that we use. So the, the trick to it all is looking at uh, the technology that's out there. There are a truckload of tools and apps and you know programs that you can use in your business. Trick's really looking to what's actually going to help you and serve you in your business to do two things, uh, and one is to make more money because that's what business is about. If, you, if you're in business and not making money, then you're not in a business, you're in a hobby. Uh, the second thing is, uh, which is more important than making money, is how does it save you time? So those two things are your critical things with your online um, uh, transformation. The reason why time is uh, most important is because uh, that's what we've got a limited amount of. So, uh, and I've seen so many people that are in this, you know, small, medium business space doing things that they shouldn't do and it wastes all their time. Now, these functions have to happen in business, uh, but it doesn't need to happen by the business owner. So a good example of that would be uh, doing your own website. You know, why would you do your own website? Uh, and, and, well, I do, I, but I'm a web developer. Actually, <laughs> actually, I lie. I, I, I don't do all of my website. I've got uh, VAs that work for me who are web developers and they do that. I just happen to direct what they do because I know what outcomes I want and I, and I know how I want to get there. Uh, and I get someone else who, to uh, do the work of the uh, construction. So um, if you spend your time uh, building a website, uh, you know, if you're not a web developer, it might take you, uh, you know, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. I've seen people take up to a year to, uh, to build their website and still not get it finished. Uh, the question is, is what are you sacrificing uh, to do that yourself? And uh, what you're sacrificing is generally your, your genius, the core of what you're really good at, the reason why your business exists, and the reason why your, your uh, customers and prospective customers want to um, meet with you, talk with you, do, uh, do business with you. So it's costing you money and it's costing you time. Uh, and, it, and, and for a lot of small businesses, it's costing them their lifestyle uh, as well, too. So business is a lifestyle. It shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't be the thing that takes up all of your lifestyle. It should be creating a lifestyle for you. So, so digital transformation is really a way to, uh, to save your time, make more money, uh, make business easier, and uh, to make it a whole lot more enjoyable and to uh, help you reach the goals that you want. So can I ask, uh, in terms of your goals being in business, what is your fundamental uh, main goal or driver for being in business? And, and um, I'll just qualify that as well too. It's not to serve your customers. So I'm talking about your personal goal, why you are in business at the end of the day. So what, what is your goal? Feel free to unmute and just let me know, just so I get some sort of sense of uh, why you're here. Yeah, Rob. Yeah, my goal is, um, as Aldwin knows, I, I've been uh, wrongly accused of an aircraft crash. So my goal is to get the truth out there. Now, I know I won't get the government to, uh, to rewrite the report or anything like that. So my goal is to, as I've said, write the book and let the public know and let the pressure build up with the public. Now, there's no other way that I know to do it apart from... Things yeah. like that. 
So, so it sounds like, I mean, you're, you're in a wee bit of a different um, yes, yeah. space in the sense that uh, you're not in it for the money. Uh, you're, you're in it for the, for the truth and, and, and helping people to discover what the truth is. Correct, to right and wrong. And, yep. and there's a lot of people that are behind me in, in this sort of other pilots that have had their license suspended. So it's to right or wrong, but I, I am appreciative of the fact that the government is not going to, the public servants will not change their mind. So this is my only other way is to get uh, public pressure. All right. So, so that's a, that is a, uh, an example of a really good goal in the sense of your end goal in business is, to, uh, is really about awareness and to right, to right the wrong. So that's the goal is to right the wrong. And so everything you do is really directed towards that thing. So it's really thinking about uh, how can I best spend my money to get there? How can I best spend my time to get there? And how can I use all of the resources that are available to me today to get that message out there as quickly as possible, as effectively as possible, and as widely as possible? Would that Correct. be right? Correct. Yep. Okay. Good as gold. Great. All right. Who else? Yeah, myself. Paul. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I get a great deal of uh, satisfaction in protecting people and looking after people. Um, it was the same value that I had when I was a finance broker years ago. So money is one thing for me, but also it, you, you get a massive amount of pleasure when you see your results come to fruition and, and solve people's problems and get them out of difficulty. Okay, so so that there is a is a byproduct of what you do. Um, so if uh, so, are you in business? Uh, like, do you charge for what you do? I do charge, yeah, absolutely, yeah. But yep. but with just dis with discretion, I help. So I, I'm on Facebook with a few. I help some of my Facebookers sometimes for free. Yep, and that gives me a lot of pleasure because they're my friends. They've done things for me, and yeah. Okay. Yep. Good as gold. But at the end of the day, you're in a business, aren't you? I am absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And and you've got some passion in the business and a reason for being there. So you know, which is you know what you're doing and helping people. So that's part yep. of the reason. Um, the business though exists, it's got an end goal to exist and the business won't exist unless you're making money. You're right. Totally agree. Yep. So, um, so, so, and, and if you think about it, how long are you going to be in this business for? I should think for the rest of my days. For the rest of your days. So any exit strategy or? Um, no, because I can probably run it off a Zimmer frame, you know? <laughs> okay. Yep. So, so that's, that's important to think of too is, uh, is an exit strategy. If there is an exit strategy, uh, and uh, really, is it a lifestyle? And so, so some businesses become your lifestyle. Other businesses uh, provide you for your for your lifestyle. So, and and right. possibly it's it's it, it's both of those in there for uh, by the sound of things. Yeah, I, I, we're on live, so I have to be a little careful what I say. So no, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. All right. So, uh, who else? Who, who else has got a um, their, their goal for their business? What's your major reason for being in business? I'll go if um, no one else is ready. Um, I I wanted to, like I said before, I wanted to come to this event simply because I've just launched my stylist program, my stockist program, and my affiliate marketing program, and uh, I. I'm just really passionate about partnering with other small businesses, other entrepreneurs, and basically the reason I created the business in the first place is I'm a pear-shaped woman and got tired of not being able to find clothing that fits. It's very demoralizing. So I really like to promote, you know, body positivity and helping women love their curves and um, really want to promote these programs to make sure that that message can be spread. Awesome. So that's your that's your passion for being in a business. That's what that's what really fundamentally drives you, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and are you in it to make money? Y well, yes, of yes. course. Um, <laughs> yes, and also just to, I would love at the end of you know when I eventually maybe sell the company or hand it over to someone else that more fashion brands. Yep. Design and clothing for other bodies. And how much time uh, would you ideally like to be spending in your business? Oh, working in it? Well, so I'm a business business development manager actually by day, and yeah. um, I'm on a podcast myself, and I help support many other businesses. And I actually that's another passion of mine. So, doing half day mentoring other businesses, and then half days doing pair collections would be my ideal 
concept while also you know making sure that I have warehousing that all of the online orders goes out directly through the warehousing having employees where I'm you know the CEO figurehead not actually working in the company but working on it yeah okay so working on it so really when you're working on a business that's that's really where your your biggest point of growth with it is and it means it's not dependent on you uh, yes. And you're not dependent on it. Uh, it's yes, a, it's absolutely. an entity in its own right that runs in its own right. And that's sort of where we want to get to in business. Absolutely. Especially for any clothing business. I don't know if anyone has a background in it. Um, it takes a lot of work <laughs> um, to actually design, get it manufactured, sell it, promote it, all that jazz. And um, I would love to eventually, you know, create a whole community around it where, yeah, I just work on building it and it employs people and helps people just feel better about themselves around the world. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thanks for that. Um, sorry, Michael. Uh, Nick, I, I've had a lot of business experience over many, many years and, and um, my main goal now is to um, help people not be part of the 90% plus new businesses that, that fail in the first year. I've seen many businesses fail and I, I've learned why they fail and I've set up a program to, to um, um, make sure that they don't, don't fail. And I just wanna give back because, because post pandemic, there will be a lot of people um, starting new businesses that because they lost their job and because they've got commitments and, and, and everything. So number one, I want to want to give back. Number two, I want to make some money. Yeah. And um, and if I can ask you, um, I'm just finishing the development of my website, or at least I'm having it done. Um, what's the the best payment gateway or or e-commerce platform? Um, uh, that's a whole. Or, that, that's a, a whole other question. Um, there, there, I mean, there are a number of them. What have you, what have you looked at? What are you leaning towards at the moment? Look, Shopify. Yep. Um, okay, so Shopify is a website platform. It's not a payment gateway. It has a payment gateway built into it. Um, uh, if you're looking for a payment gateway, then that would be something like Stripe or PayPal or uh, Square eway one of those ones there. Generally, they're, they're all much of a, uh, a muchness. I, I personally use Stripe. Um, but, uh, but I use PayPal for some of them as well. So it, it really, uh, yeah, they're so easy to integrate these days that, uh, you know, just choosing one, it really makes no difference, you know, which one you go to go with, as long as you're, you're with one that, um, uh, is, um, first of all, got the, uh, the lowest fees for the best service. Yes. So, so for my money, uh, it's been Stripe. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So. Um, so, so just to give you a sense of uh, my goal, like I've got a theme for this year that uh, in my business, I sold my web development business uh, last year. And, um, and my theme for my uh, business this year is recurring income. Uh, I've been running recurring income businesses for 20, 23 years. And I can't tell you how good it is uh, because it means you can go on holiday uh, it means that uh, first of the month comes along, all of the expenses and overheads are paid. Well, well my businesses were set up so that uh, all of the expenses and overheads you know, were paid so that anything else that I made during that uh, month was effectively you know, profit. That was, that was my, my money uh, to, um, to use for, uh, you know, my, you know, in my discretion. So recurring revenue is, is the theme. And the reason why... Um, I'm looking at uh, recurring revenue businesses uh, is that uh, uh, they're the sort of things that you can set it up once or we put all of the front in the uh, front end, uh, all of the work in the front end, and then it will just keep on uh, producing income uh, into the future with a minimal of effort. So I don't believe in passive income. Passive income doesn't really truly exist. There's always some effort uh, involved with uh, you know, creating an earning income but you can minimize the time that you spend in earning income and deliver a better value product by setting up something that's a recurring revenue program. So, I've talk, so, so that's where I'll, I'll lead, come to at the end. Uh, so what I'm leading to is, gonna, is really gonna lead uh, to some of that. 
what I, what I would like to say though is that um, we live in interesting times, in the sense that uh, our society has, uh, in fact, the world has shifted forever. So people's uh, behaviour has has really uh, shifted forever. There has never been a bigger, more effective marketing campaign on the planet ever. Uh, until COVID came along. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, if you think about uh, March, pretty much from March in that month or two months, the, that, that message there, uh, if, uh, even if it's not, even if we're not thinking about the virus spreading around the world, the message of the virus has traveled the world almost quicker than the virus itself. And, um, and so a lot of the talk is around, it's affected our world in such a way that uh, businesses have, have, have closed down, the economy shut down, the economy's changed, people's uh, lifestyle has been uh, impacted and changed. And a lot of this has been beyond people's control. So they've had no real control over what's actually happened uh, to them. Then, and so that's created uh, some interesting uh, opportunities and, uh, and issues and problems uh, with it as well. Uh, at the time that the uh, pandemic hit, we uh, j had just launched a travel agency site for a uh, travel agent here in Australia. Um, or most of our clients were in the USA and they were organizing trips to predominantly Italy. So it was a very niche business. And uh, at that time there, Italy was one of the first places that went into complete lockdown. And so her business uh, within about a week uh, closed down in a, in a week. So, uh, and being in the travel business, uh, you know, how do you pivot when you're in a travel, uh, travel business? How do, how do you even go online? How do, you, how do you even have some sort of digital transformation? What do you actually do with your, uh, with your business? So that was, a, that was an example of someone that really suffered um, quite a lot. But when you have a look at, uh, say, airlines, what do the airlines do during that, uh, during that period? So their flights were uh, reduced. Obviously, our overheads, some of the overheads have come down because they're not spending so much on fuel and uh, you know, airport fees and all those sort of things there. But think about what they did. And what they did was they, they, they effectively went online, 100% online, and they sold things that uh, they sold uh, as part of their travel package, but it became the main thing that they now sold. So you see airlines selling wine. So, uh, so they were selling, uh, they were doing uh, uh, email promotions uh, for selling wine. So that's the first thing they did. So they were already buying wine because they were serving it on, the, uh, on their planes. Now they just changed where they delivered it to. The second thing they started selling was insurance. So because they had a massive database of people, uh, they became a very uh, valuable commodity for uh, insurance companies. And so there are, so the insurance companies were partnering with uh, the airline uh, industry to sell insurance. And so, um, and the sorts of insurances that were being sold were things like income protection, uh, which uh, at the time, you know, people are losing their jobs. So income protection was becoming a really important uh, insurance to have. Uh, and they're also selling health insurance as well. So we had this uh, COVID pandemic, health insurance became uh, more in demand. I'm not sure whether they covered, uh, you know, what was there. There's probably some exclusions in it, but you see the airline industry changing what they do and changing uh, online. So, um, so, you know, so in the travel industry, you, you, you've got two, two different, uh, you know, experiences uh, in there. So in, when you look at people's behavior, uh, they've changed. So talk about digital transformation. Most businesses, when I talk about digital transformation, think that that is um, going to Zoom. So uh, their, their experience is, is being online is uh, you know, having uh, conversations on Zoom. But it's a whole lot more than that. So when you look at uh, consumers' behavior, uh, they are now shopping online. So, so shopping online was a, was a bit of a novelty and a fun thing when, that, when it first started. Uh, but now it's starting to become mainstream. Uh, and uh, I see every day the Coles and Woolworths trucks traveling uh, through our community. And I live in a uh, small community. Uh, like I, I'm in Mount Tambourine, which is sort of out of the Gold Coast. And uh, we've, we've got the delivery trucks coming up all the time. So you got people shopping online. And, uh, and so, so uh, delivery is big, home delivery has now been, become a, uh, a big thing. So those businesses are absolutely booming. Um, 
uh, if if we ever get back to the point where you know business turn uh, you know resumes back to normal, I don't think people's behaviour in terms of shopping online is going to change significantly. They are still going to be doing a lot of their shopping online. Uh, they're also meeting online. Now, there is a bit of Zoom, what do you call it, Zoom fatigue out there at the moment. And uh, people love to get together and actually meet people. But Zoom is just such an effective way for people to conduct meetings. And uh, because you don't have to travel, you, uh, so when you, typically when you're traveling, uh, you spend three times as long. Um, you know, so if you've got the meeting, you've got the travel time before, the travel time afterwards and the preparation around it, which is about three times longer than that uh, actual meeting. So now people are managing to, to do either do more in a day or have more free time because they're not having to uh, do all this travel. Um, and then you've got uh, uh, offline services are now online. So Paul um, uh, Sheaf is a classic example of that there. Uh, who'd have thought um, that uh, you would be that, that you would take funerals online. So I know you're there, so you know, videoing them uh, in person, but the people that are viewing them are viewing them online. Uh, I know that uh, I was at a funeral uh, late, or oh, sorry, early last year, or probably about mid last year. I was the videographer there uh, because the uh, most of the family lived in New Zealand and the funeral was held here in Australia. So we live streamed the uh, the funeral to a um, uh, to a Facebook page so that uh, people could participate in the um, in the funeral ceremony. So so you know who'd have ever thought uh, before uh, last year that funerals would be be online? But here we are. This is the um, this is the uh, new thing. Uh, weddings are online as well too. So you know services that are traditionally offline are, are online. But. Um, when you look at service industries as well, uh, one that really comes to mind is yoga. So yoga, uh, you know, typically people would turn up to yoga studios uh, for their class and um, they would, um, you know, pay their money and uh, go you know, participate in yoga and then, then they go home. So obviously when COVID came along, then uh, it all had to go online and there was a scramble to get online. But there's a real byproduct with taking yoga online. First thing is, this, you know, people don't have to travel. They can roll the mats out at home and they can participate in the yoga class. And effectively, there's no real difference because you're not talking in the yoga class. You're just doing. So, you know, they could do from, from their own home on a, uh, on, on a TV or computer screen. And so as people got used to that, that experience, uh, people that were the yoga studios found that using Zoom, they were automatically recording their video, uh, the, the sessions. So uh, with one of the yoga uh, businesses we were working with, uh, those recordings now became a library that they were able to put up online and sell as a membership uh, option. So instead of people paying their 10 bucks to go along to a yoga class, now they're paying uh, $30 to have unlimited access to any of the classes online whenever they wanted. Uh, they, they didn't have to uh, book in at the time that the yoga studio was running it. They could do it at any time they wanted and they could have as many classes as they wanted as well too. So, um, so, so, so this yoga studio had found that they have created a, a whole new product and a whole new uh, uh, income stream. And that there is a recurring revenue income stream. So uh, what they were doing um, over and over and over again, now they only had to do it once and they were selling it multiple times. So people accessing it uh, multiple times. So, so, so if you think about your business, what can you do in your business that uh, you're consistently doing with clients on a regular basis, that uh, you're just repeating the same thing over and over and over and over again, that you could uh, either do it online or turn it into a recurring uh, revenue income stream. And it may not in fact be what you're doing uh, at the moment. So, um, you know, if, if you've got a business there, uh, let's say Algren takes, um, uh, does photo shoots and, uh, uh, you obviously, you know, have to keep doing the photo shoots, uh, you know, because people get older and they, they need to have uh, photos to sort of touch them up and whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, so you, so you can't really make that a subscription program, but you can make a subscription program out of uh, getting your photos done regularly. So, you know, so pretty much photos, I, I guess, uh, and I, I, I don't know the photo industry that well, but, you know, it's like, you know, it can be seasonal. So, you know, people can get their photos done, you know, sort of four times a year or twice a year. They know they need to update it. So if you turn that into a subscription program where they sort of, let's say, paid, I don't know, $100 a month or whatever it is so that um, they keep paying that and they can have a photo shoot on demand, 
then uh, you'll find that uh, people are not going to get a photo shoot every single month. Um, but uh, they're going to get they, they will come and ask you for that photo shoot when, for instance, they've got a book launch, they've got uh, a new sort of product for the website, they've got um, a, you know something special coming on, they, they've got an event running. So, um, so for you, it means that you've got consistent income coming in. Uh, for them, it means they've got the convenience of not having to wait for a photo shoot uh, and book you, uh, you know, sort of like a, lo a long time to book in. And they don't have to come up with a uh, large sum of money to pay you for that uh, photo shoot because they've been sort of paying it over the, um, uh, over the year. The great thing about it is for a business owner, you can often make more money on a subscription program when people are paying less on a, uh, on a monthly basis. So, um, so, you may, so if you start to think about what you're offering there, uh, sort of a wee bit differently in terms of how you deliver it, then you start to find some different ways of uh, providing it. The other thing you can do too is that uh, we have an abundance of these things around. Uh, everyone has got one of these in their pocket. And uh, there are so many people taking awful photos and videos out there at the moment. Uh, <laughs> And, um, and they're just fundamental things, you know, like, it's like people that take photos uh, where their head is in the bottom third of the frame when it should be in the top third of the frame. You know, those are just really simple things that people don't know. So, uh, you know, you can be offering some, some very cheap photo, photo courses for people that want to take better photos and videos for themselves on their iPhones. So, and, and you're not going to make a ton of money out of it in, in the sense that you're not going to be sort of, say, selling that for you know, you know, two hundred dollars a month or five hundred dollars, whatever. There might might be a program that you're selling for, you know, a thirty dollars subscription a month, but uh, it, it's all on volume, and so uh, it, it it effectively costs you nothing to uh, to make these tips because you already know what it is. You're just putting your knowledge into a format that people can access. Um, but um, you know, thirty dollars a month, uh, then you start to market that out and start to leverage that out. If you get a thousand consumers on that, there. Uh, then you've got uh, thirty thousand dollars a month coming in. If you've got a uh, hundred consumers on it, then you've got uh, what's that? Three thousand dollars a month coming in. So, uh, and if you think about that, how 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 easy is it to get a hundred people to um, to buy a program you know like that? Or even if it's thirty people that go and buy it, that's three hundred dollars a month. What does that do for your, uh, you know, you know, your your expenses, your overheads, you know, those sort of things there. So if you start thinking about those things there, it, it's like you're selling your knowledge, um, first of all, to consumers like that. But you can also sell your knowledge, like another good friend of mine who's a photographer. He's a headshot photographer, and um, he teaches other photographers how to take great headshots. And um, so he's able to charge more for that because it's a professional. Uh, investment as opposed to a hobby investment. He's, he's well known for, for, for what he's doing. He is the headshot guy. And um, so he's positioned himself in, in that way there so that uh, as the expert, he's able to charge for his, um, uh, for his classes to uh, his peers and colleagues. So no longer are they competitors now, they are now colleagues. And he's delivering that online. So um, so does that give you some sort of sense, you know, if you start to think a wee bit differently about your business, some ideas about what you can do? Yes. Yep. Absolutely. So, um, so that's the first challenge is that uh, going on a digital transformation and going online is not necessarily delivering what you're doing at the moment offline. It is maybe sort of just changing what you're doing and maybe sort of changing who you're delivering it to and what it is you're delivering and thinking about, uh, you know, how, how you can sort of, so just really thinking outside of, uh, you know, what you're delivering uh, offline. So if you can do that, then uh, you can definitely make that sort of shift uh, online. Um, some of the benefits of it, uh, as I talked about, is that uh, if you can sell stuff online, there is no travel involved uh, with it. So you're saving all that time. Uh, you make something once and you sell it multiple times or you, you get multiple people buying that same thing that you're, um, that you're selling. Um, and, um, uh, and, the, and the other thing is that you start to develop some side products that you thought you, you, you maybe never thought possible uh, in terms of what you, you could sell. So, uh, you know, just like the airlines are selling wine as their main product, you know, that's, that, that wasn't, you know, that on their radar, you know, beforehand. But here's, here's the real thing that's happening uh, with the online digital world at the moment is that because people are living their life online, they expect better service and they expect it more quickly. 
So because they can get on and order uh, their groceries and it takes them half an hour or three quarters of an hour to go through and order their groceries online and have it delivered to their door, sometimes same day, sometimes the next day, uh, as opposed to going down to the supermarket, fighting for a car park and spending about three or four hours uh, going to three supermarkets to get all the things that they want and um, then having to uh, put it in the car, drive home, lug it home, hot day, kids scream, you know, all that sort of stuff that, that, that happens. Um, they are, people are be becoming conditioned that they can uh, go online, they can get something online and they can get it now and it will, will arrive today or tomorrow. So to distinguish yourself from other people that are in your industry out there, you need to be delivering the same sort of service. So um, you, you need to be quicker, faster and better uh, online. So, and there are ways to, um, to be able to uh, deliver that as well too. If you've got a service, um, people, you know, people wander into your, play, into your premises to, to ask you about your service and, and you have your sales meetings there. Uh, doing it online is quite different. When people come into your premises, you're in control of the conversation and you're in control of uh, how the discussion goes. You're the one that's making the sale. You're asking all the questions. Online, uh, you don't have that luxury because when people reach your website, uh, it's a one-way conversation. Uh, they're not having a conversation with you. They're reading your information and they're finding out a whole lot more about you, making their decisions based on never, ever speaking to you. So some people will never pick up the phone and speak to you. So your websites now need to be uh, the, the digital handshake that you are offering people in person when they uh, came to talk to you and speak to you. So your, so your website uh, is no longer just a brochure. It needs to be interactive uh, and it needs to uh, answer their questions and their, their, yeah, their questions that they have before they even ask them. So let me ask you this. Uh, the people that, or the customers that come to you and the people that you deal with, uh, the questions that I ask you, how many of them are the same questions you just get asked over and over and over again from different people? Is that the experience you have? Yes, yes, I see. So, so Rod's the only one that hasn't, but yours is a wee bit different um, in terms of that. <laughs> you're not selling anything. You're 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 telling you're telling your story. <laughs> It's a little um, bit different. I appreciate that. Yeah, but but you'll still get some people that will say the same things. I'm sure. You know, like how could that happen? You know, why why could that happen? I don't understand why the government would do that. You know, so some of those same sort of questions would come through. Correct. Yeah. So so in business, because you know that 80 percent of the questions, probably closer to 95 percent of the people questions that people ask, uh, everyone's going to ask those questions. You need to get those up onto the website. And, um, uh, and that way, and you need to have it uh, on your website, the copy on your website in a form that uh, you're answering the questions before they're able to verbalize it so that they say in their mind, oh, I had that question, um, but uh, you know, you've just covered it. So if, if, you, if they can read through the copy on your website and say, oh yeah, I had that question. I was thinking that, oh, that's just like me. Uh, then that's, that's the way that you're developing rapport with people uh, online. So, um, and so instead of having that uh, two way conversation, they feel like they're having a two way conversation just by reading. So it's like reading a really good book that you get engrossed in a, in a book and you feel like you are the character in the in the book. So you know, if you're reading first person, you're that character in the book. That's how people need to feel about themselves on the uh, on the website. And so, um, and so your website should take them down a customer journey as well or a down a journey and it's the same journey they will go on uh, offline with you so if you're talking to people about uh, you know what your services are and you take them through a process you take them through that same process online now it's, it's going to use different mediums in the sense that you've got your text on your web page uh, video is really important so um, video you you is not an option it you're absolutely poor is not an option it is a must so you have to have video on your website. You have to use video in social media uh, if you're going to sell. Alfred. You're talking really about a conversation. It is very much a conversation. Yes, yes, it is. And people are really awkward about that. You know, it's like, how do you have a conversation on a web page? Because we've never had to do it before. But today they are conversational websites. 
And the ones that are winning the game, uh, you might remember, um, you know, years back, the websites that had long sales copy on it, like, you know, long uh, sort of websites that really sort of, uh, they just went on forever. That there was a conversational, though were your early conversational websites. So, um, you know, that's where we're back to now, uh, uh, conversational websites like that. Maybe, maybe not in the same format, but it's the same concept. Nick and the mates, the, the, the video on the website is you talking to the visitor, the one person who's visiting your site, telling them who you are and what you do and how you can help solve their problem. Yep. And, and ideally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. ideally, if you can uh, start to answer some of the uh, questions they have in their heads already, like their initial questions before they ask it, that's where you start to make those connections. Yeah, and they get to know you before they actually bring you up. Absolutely. Put, this is, they, they this is your digital handshake. Hear, um, yeah, you're starting to forge that relationship. Yep. Um, you, you know, the most important thing for me in, in business has been, um, it, it's actually been video uh, and it's all the live videos I do on Facebook. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Though, though that there is the most important uh, part of business. And it's the thing that scares most people <laughs> is, <laughs> is that gets sort of seeing themselves on, uh, on video. Mm-hmm. But um, <clears throat> well, when I get in front of the lens, my mates say, get back behind the camera where you belong. <laughs> it's really funny you know I, I talk to people about uh you know uh, getting on a video i said look you can't make a bad video because um you know what people see is um this is just who you are anyway so if you don't like the sound of the voice your voice and the look of your face that's what you're presenting to the world anyway you're just getting to see it for yourself now yeah as i said in the radio station the other day i've got a face for radio yeah that's right <laughs> Well, I, I don't think that I sort of, um, are, am a necessary particularly good presenter. Um, I've got sort of a few ums and ahs that uh, are in when I speak as well too. So, you know, I'm not really a radio personality or TV personality, but I am me. <laughs> um, and, um, and, 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 and what, what happens is, is that uh, when, you, when you can start to relate to people online, uh, there's a few things that happen. One, they get to know you, as you said, uh, and they decide whether they like you or not, which is a great thing because people that don't like you, they can they can go. So you don't want those people around anyway. The only ones you want to deal with, and you know, in your in um, generally in business, are those that you've uh, have got an affinity with and uh, and mm. you know like you and actually want to do you know hang out with you because that's that's yeah. really what you're doing, developing a relationship. So um, so it's a good way to qualify people. Who's- got it in for you before you even start yeah exactly exactly yep and um and and there is nothing that really is off limits as well too so um i think uh, if you can tell your embarrassing stories and uh the things that you wouldn't want to share they're some of the best ones that get you the best connections and uh getting people to uh you know develop an an affinity uh, towards you i remember when i told my story about uh when i left new zealand uh during the gfc and I, I had a mortgage broking business over there, sold that, but uh, left that, lost everything. We had a $6 million portfolio of properties. We lost absolutely everything uh, during the uh, GFC. I'd, I hadn't told anyone about that for probably, I kept it under wraps for probably about six or seven years. And I didn't realize how, how much effect or impact it had on business uh, because, um, because I wasn't uh, yeah, open about it. It meant that in my marketing, uh, I was uh, concerned and worried about people uh, finding me uh, from back then that uh, that I owed money to, uh, generally, you know, banks and things like that there, uh, and coming after me here. So I just didn't want that. So can you imagine what that's like? You're, you're trying to be online. You're trying to market yourself, get lots of publicity, yet you're trying to hide as well. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't work. And so... <laughs> So I discovered that it's far better to tell your story and get it out there uh, because once it's out there, there are no secrets. So you can be yourself and uh, you can promote the, uh, the heck out of yourself. So, so, um, so video is a really good medium for, uh, for doing that. Um, so, so that brings us, back to, uh, brings us through to social media as well too. Uh, if you're avoiding social media, don't. You need it. It's your friend. 
Uh, it can be your enemy as well too, but make it your friend um, because uh, that's where you get to uh, really get to know people today. And the, the benefits of it are, is that I do business uh, across Australia, New Zealand, US, UK, I think uh, clients in Dubai, uh, and it's all because uh, I, you know, I'm consistently online, and um, but, you know, which has got its pluses and minuses. I work in the uh, nighttime as well as the daytime as well too. But it uh, it really gets, uh, you know, it, it gives you a bigger pool of people to work with. And if you're selling online, then uh, there's no reason why you should uh, just restrict yourself to the uh, just the local market. So uh, you know, you might as well spread your message as wide as possible because it's easy to get 30 customers from a billion people than it is to get 30 customers from 100 people. So if you can spread your message wider, then you know, that's a good thing. So use your social media. Um, oh, so, so instant service, that's right. So what's gonna happen is, is there's, there's gonna be a whole lot of businesses out there that are not gonna embrace this online business thing. So what, and they, they're going to think that they can keep doing business the way they're doing business offline, in person, uh, without really understanding the online world. I hear a lot of people say, I'm not really that techy, uh, or I'm not tech savvy. So I would encourage people when they say that to say, oh, thank you for sharing that. Um, I've decided that I'm actually tech curious. So if you change your language around that there, then uh, you, you can then allow yourself to come and explore all the online things. Now I can tell you, there are thousands and thousands of tools out there. Really easy to be overwhelmed, but uh, you just uh, pick one and uh, you just uh, master the one. And then once you've done that, then you move on to the, um, to the next one. So be tech curious and it doesn't take too long you only need about five or six different online tools and apps, and that's enough for you to really run your business. And I'll talk about what, you know, what ones they are to, that are essential for your business today. And um, you know, master those and uh, you, you, know, you can really master the uh, online world. If, um, so, so what's going to happen is there are people out there who are, who are tech curious that are really getting into it. And they're the ones that are going to win business in the, uh, in the next few years. Uh, because what's going to happen is, is because people are used to being online, uh, they're expecting instant delivery. They want uh, not just delivery of their groceries, but they want to be able to buy products online and services online and have instant delivery of products and services. So yoga classes for, you know, is, is an example of that there. So they don't have to wait till tomorrow. They want to buy it now and, and, and uh, have it now. So you need to think about how you deliver things instantly. And not only that, how do you communicate and build relationships with people that haven't bought off you uh, so that they do come back and buy? Only 3% of people that come to your website are, are, are ever going to buy anything on the first visit. Uh, or maybe second visit, everybody else needs to have a conversation with you. And these days, uh, used to, I think it used to be about seven touch points before people would buy. These days, it's around 21 to 25. So they need to see you on, on Facebook, LinkedIn, they need to see you on you know, something, uh, Zoom like this. Uh, they want to see your emails, visit your website, uh, see you on a Saturday morning when you're doing your live, to, telling your story. Uh, you know, so, so you think about 21 to 25 times, that's a lot of messages and that can take a lot of time. So you need to think about how can you automate as much of that as possible? So the best way to do it is to think about uh, your website. What, what is the purpose of your website? And most people's website really only has one job and that's to get an email address. That's it. So that, you know, that is your objective. So forget selling anything on your website, forget uh, you know, so sort of trying to uh, prove yourself on the website, uh, forget, uh, you know, credibility on your website. I mean, that's all important, but the, the job of the website is just to get that uh, email address. So, uh, so you need to have a good call to action that where you give them something of enormous value that they're prepared to leave the email address. So it's not a newsletter. So don't ask people to subscribe to your newsletter, give them something that's of value. Yeah, Alfred. You're still muted. How often do you need to send the messages out? Every day, twice a week? What's look? It really just depends on what what uh, your service is. Um, when you when you look at some big businesses like um, say Kogan or uh, Woolworths or Coles, like often they'll send out messages every day, sometimes twice a day. Uh, other people, uh, that might be too much. Um, but uh, so you, you just need to think about what it is you're selling. Now, I'm just looking at, um, oh, let's think, uh, 
Let, let's go back to videography, for instance, uh, let, or funerals, uh, funeral photography, since we've got uh, Paul here. Um, you've got a very short window of time to get that business. Uh, you know, someone's died, uh, the funeral is in, t in a week, two weeks or whatever, you've very short window. So with that there, you may want to send an email every day until you win that business. Uh, but it's not a pestering email. It's an email about, uh, you, know, uh, you know, as people are preparing for this funeral service, what are some things that they don't know that would be helpful for them to know that you could, let, you know, you could send an email out about? So you're not pitching or selling yourself. You're positioning yourself as the person that is prov uh, providing uh, people with the answers before they ask them. Uh, and they'll come back to you naturally yeah. when, when they um, are ready to buy. Sorry, Alfred? You're giving them value. Yeah, absolutely. More, oh, it's more than just value. It's like it's actually what they want uh, and what they need. So, so it is value, but you're thinking ahead, further ahead than they're thinking themselves and giving them stuff before they even ask for it, if that makes sense. Right. Also, it's awareness. Um, I was talking to someone on Zoom today that had um, a family... Lost, lost one of their, their, their people, most of their, uh, one of their family passed away in New South Wales. Most of the relatives were in New Zealand and they didn't know that they could live stream it. And they had yep. two people just recording it on their phones and then somehow or other sent the video over later on. They yep. didn't know. So uh, to that end, I've been, um, um, promoting through LinkedIn and, and Facebook and I'm developing a relationship with all the local funeral directors and this is about draft six yep. of, a, of a flyer which I'll take and put on their counter awesome. um, because most of them know me because that's the point that's the first person that they go to in that case is either the funeral directors or their local church yep you know? perfect yep. yeah and uh, so, Nick one point if I may is it turning what they want into what they need? Yes, yes. So you never, so you're never talking to them about what they need. You're addressing what they want first, and the the awareness that Paul talked about is you're introducing what they need. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people make that mistake. They sort of think that their 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 product, their service is what they're selling, but it's not. Um, you know, people don't want that. They want they want the outcome, the result, and they want what they want, but um, they don't quite know what they need at the moment. The, the outcome of a stream is that people over there can be present without actually physically being over here. Yep, yep. And, and that, that's, that's the problem that we solve, and we happen to use a, a bunch of technology to do that. To do it, yep, yep. And, and some people won't, won't even know that exists. That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, if you, if you can start to, to get to that, that's where you start to win it online is where mm. you start to understand, you know, what it is you do, but, but, but it's not what you do, but it's about what, what is the experience that people want mm. uh, and um, how can you make it better mm -hmm. uh, so that they really get what they want that they didn't think was possible. And mm. that really is an awareness of uh, raising process. So that, that 3% of people that come and buy today, they're the ones that know what they want. They're, they're aware mm. of it. Uh, they, they've probably been researching. They've got the solutions and they've just decided you're it. Yep. Um, but the other 97%, uh, that's where most of your business comes from. A lot, a lot of businesses just focus on that 3%, just the ones that are, are, are top of the iceberg. But the, the real value of it is, is underwater, under that iceberg. And mm. if you can really start to introduce concepts and things that they haven't really thought of, that really brings that uh, awareness up to the, uh, up to the surface. Mm. And that's sort of why you do your, your, your live streams and your videos and, and those sort of things there, because you talk about that sort mm. of thing. Like I talk about things on... Uh, on video that, um, you know, for me, are just common sense. And then someone mm. asks a question, I thought, oh, actually, they're not aware of that. And mm. so, we, you know, we, we get into a conversation there that was is outside my realm of knowing what where, that, where they're at and what, what they're thinking of, but is really important uh, for them. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So, um, so I guess where, where, where it sort of leaves is if you think about your website as that vehicle to get an email address, it needs to be a conversation. So you need a conversational website. Um, people are wanting instant delivery now. So no longer are you as the business owner in control of the transaction. 
the consumer is now in control of the transaction because they can go online and get things when they want it uh, and they can go and shop when they want it. They don't have to wait until your uh, hours are open. They can go whenever they like. So they're getting used to and conditioned to the fact that, um, you know, they can do things on their terms rather than on the uh, business owner's terms. So that's one of the fundamental shifts that are happening in, uh, in business today. Yeah. So, um, so you need to start thinking about how can you uh, hand over control of the experience to um, people that, uh, you know, where they feel like they're in control. Mm. Great example of that, Nick. Um, only a few weeks ago, I was buying stuff and I never thought I'd buy from Amazon. Um, but I found I was buying heaps of little adapters, clamps, things to bolt stuff to me, cameras and, and the likes. And you know, a little pop-up would say, um, yeah, purchase by midnight for delivery tomorrow. And I thought, oh, wow, okay. And sure enough, um, you know, I, I paid paid in the cart at 5 to 12 and they sent me a tracking thing. And at 1 o'clock, it was shipped out of the, the store somewhere out in Western Sydney and it was delivered before midday. Yep. Next day. And I thought, that's not bad. And I ordered, and I had about seven things in it, half of the one package was delivered before midday from Western Sydney. The other lot came from the Melbourne warehouse and was delivered before midday the next day. Yeah. Thought, so, so, so is this something you, so, so now you're going to expect that, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And I just, so, so if you've got to wait three weeks for from, something. I ordered something from Canada the other day and it took about five weeks to get here and it arrived um, yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, so people are just not going to put up with that, uh, you know, that, that length of time. So, you know, instant pay double delivery. To have it the next day. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, so that's really where we're moving, and that's why, so sort of, you know, being online is so important, is because you can actually do that, and you can deliver a better experience that uh, consumers are, are in charge of. The, the the upside of it too is it's, it it uh, means that you spend less time delivering it as well too, uh, because you can start to automate it now. What I haven't talked about, which I won't have time to uh, talk about uh, tonight, is uh, having a CRM, which is a customer relationship management tool. So think about um, you know, Active Campaign, Drip, Entreport, Keep, you know, so those sort of tools there. They are essential tools for business today. If you don't have one in business, uh, then uh, you need to get it. There, there is, it's not an option. You need to have it today because it helps you to uh, systemize uh, systems and processes, communication, give people what they want when they want it, and uh, and help to uh, really uh, deliver an exceptional um, customer experience. The, the plus side of, of doing that is it means that when you automate it, you're no longer involved in it. So you've got time to be involved in, in other areas. And I think, you know, uh, for, for Michael there, I think, Michael, you're the business coach, right, with the small businesses? Yes, he is. Yep. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. So, um, and, and so I think sort of startup businesses, uh, you know, business in their, in their first year of life, uh, that's where they, um, I often see, and you probably see it as well too, that's where they, uh, they really sort of fail is they don't invest in some of these essential tools. They invest in the stuff that's nice to have, but not the essential ones. And I would put a CRM as their essential tool because that's how they're going to grow their uh, business and not only grow their business they're going to save themselves time because they're only going to have to do things once and then they put it into a system and process that just keeps on continuing for um uh, you know for, uh, into the future so hopefully that's given you sort of some ideas about uh you know what's possible in this uh, new digital age um it's really been uh, an overview uh, of it so you know it's hard to get into uh, you know a lot of detail with it uh, and uh, my role with businesses is really helping them to understand this, uh, to implement it, to understand what tools are available out there, to introduce them to people that can help them uh, in various aspects I, um, because we don't do it all. And there are some really good experts out there. And the Business Owners Smashing It Online webinar uh, series that I run is all about bringing some of those experts in to talk about their area of expertise so that uh, people can you know, get all the, you know, get all the uh, jigsaw puzzle pieces together so they've got an effective uh, business online. So I think that's what I've got for you tonight. So any questions or comments or helpful or not helpful?
confusing or not confusing? Amazing, amazing, Nick, as always, you give, give so much content. It looks like Alfred has a, a question there. We've just gone eight o'clock, so I might just go a few more minutes. We've got some giveaways to do, and then we'll wrap up shortly. So just any questions, Alfred? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. They're very helpful. Now, in my case, I'm earning money for an investment. So I'm not doing this for money. I'm doing it for fun. And uh, I feel good about it. So what sort of, uh, but the problem is people don't pay for, if people don't pay for things, they don't think it's worthwhile. So this, the solution I think is to make, uh, ask them to give a donation or give them some sort of service in return. So that there's something that comes from it. Would you like to comment on that? Oh, absolutely. Well, there's, there's two things, I think, Alfred. Um, you're absolutely right in, in that um, a lot of the time people don't value what they don't pay for. Like if they just get it for free, it's like getting a, I was going to say a card out of the Weepix box, but I don't think they have those anymore. <laughs> right. um, you know, <laughs> gets chucked in the top drawer. It's nice to have, you know, it's, it's, um, but it really hasn't got a lot of value. But if someone has to really work for something, uh, and uh, or there is some work involved or, or some exchange, that's when they value it. Uh, and that's that's why diamonds are so highly priced is that uh, you know people value them because they have to work hard to earn the money to go and buy it so they treasure it and mm -hmm. it, it's it's important to them so um yeah so i think you're right okay thank you yeah good question there uh alfred thank you for that um yeah, that was that was brilliant, Nick. And I, you know, I could listen to you all day. You just always have so much wisdom to share, and absolutely loved hearing from you tonight. So thank you so much for doing that. Now I know you have an amazing program coming up—a challenge. In fact, would you like to share a little bit about that? I do. I do. I have um, because my theme of my year this year is uh, recurring income. Uh, we have the Recurring Income Challenge uh, coming up uh, next week on Monday at 11.30. So it's running for five days. The, uh, the purpose of it is, is to help people in business to uncover some of the opportunities that are in, in their business right now to create uh, at least one recurring revenue stream. Uh, it's not that difficult. It's, uh, it does require a bit of work at the front end to do it. Uh, but once you've got it in place, it's... Um, I mean, it's hard to describe how good it is to have uh, that consistent stream of income coming in every month. I, as I say, I've had that for 20 years. I've had a uh, mortgage breaking business. I've had a web development business. I've got this, this business we're in at the moment. All of them are recurring revenue uh, income businesses. And um, I think the, the mortgage business had about, uh, uh, it's about sort of, uh, 40 to $50,000 a month coming in and recurring revenue. So, so you think about that, and I, I had a staff of, of, of around 25. So, so that paid all of my salaries and wages. We, we had a lot of commission people too, so we don't have to bother about them until they sold. Uh, paid all the overheads, all that sort of things. Had a web development business. Um, web hosting is a recurring revenue model as well too. That also paid all of the uh, overheads of the business. So it just really sort of smooths out some of those cash flow. And, um, and some of the issues that sometimes people have uh, in business. It means you can take a holiday as well too. So the challenge is all about how do you uh, uh, find a, a good recurring income product in your business? So you either create it or you get it from somewhere else or you partner with people. And there's a whole lot of, there's about 13 different models that I'll talk with you about. Uh, and um, it is interactive. Uh, there will be things to do as well too. So it's not just a listen to me fest like it has been tonight. Um, it will be, you know, you'll take away some things that you can do and actively, uh, you know, look for opportunities and start to implement them as well. So as I say, that is on uh, Monday. Uh, it is uh, $197 to participate in that over the five days. Uh, but tonight uh, on Aldwin's uh, show here, uh, uh, we are offering it, well, I'm offering it at a uh, discount off that at 97. So it's uh, half price there. Uh, and pretty much, I think if you're in business, particularly if you're a service-based business, even a product-based business, you can develop programs, uh, you know, that are really worth buying. And really, and, and, and I've got a guarantee with it as well too. If you don't make that money back again, I'll give you your money back uh, that you spent on the program. So there, there is no way that you cannot make that money back in a recurring revenue program. And I'm really pleased to see that Angie has uh, already started down that track with uh, affiliate 
uh, an affiliate program, that is one of the methods there to um, have a recurring income program. So um, yeah, look, I'd like to invite you uh, all to come along to that uh, because I think uh, it will be uh, you know sort of tremendous uh, value for you. I'll um, I'll drop a link into the uh, chat there for you as well. That is brilliant. Thank you so much. Angie says, thanks. I'm really excited about it. Excellent. Thank you so much. All right. Well, we'll have some giveaways now. Now I'm going to offer two 45 minute media strategy sessions with me. We're $500 each tonight. So I'm going to offer that on the giveaway. Uh, Nick, would you like to offer a prize tonight? I would. In fact, what I thought, I'm um, having looked at uh, some people's uh, websites here tonight. Um, there are some there that could uh, do with a uh, some good improvement in terms of uh, you know 2021. So I'd be happy to offer a uh, one hour website uh, strategy session with me. Now I sell these out at 597. So if you, if you go onto my website, you'll find them there at 597. Uh, I record them uh, on like we do it on Zoom, record it, transcribe it, and give it to you. And there's some good recommendations for you to uh, implement right away. And pretty much every website I've seen tonight. Uh, there are some things that you can do that would uh, have a, a big impact on your business. So I'll, I'll give away that tonight. Fantastic. Thank you, Nick. And I know how valuable your time is. So that is a fantastic and very generous offer. So let's do your prize first. So for a session with Nick to go over your website, the winner tonight, and you have to be here, you have to be in it to win it here on the live Zoom. And the winner is Angie. Congratulations. Excellent. Yay. I love your website, Angie. So uh, that is awesome. So uh, happy to have a chat with you about that, if that's going to be helpful. Brilliant, brilliant. And now for the media strategy session with me, for one of them, media strategy session with me goes to Alfred. Congratulations. Yay. And the second one, and if anyone else would like to do a prize tonight, then you're welcome to do that. Second one goes to, ooh, oh, Michael. Congratulations, Mike Palmer. You win a media strategy session. Would anyone else like to give anything away here tonight? You can unmute yourself or just speak. While we've got this open, anyone have anything they want to promote? I can see you thinking, thinking. Anyone else want to offer anything going once? going twice oh i can give something away look i i would be happy I, if you want me to give something else away i mean sure. i don't have to sure um thank you the the uh, the va uh i've got a uh, va mini course um which uh is uh so that that's uh, selling for 97 dollars. that's our mini course we've got the big course but this is the mini course uh, if you're interested in thinking about getting a virtual assistant and how they might be able to help you, this course is something that would really help. It's a membership-based thing, so uh, you get access to it. So that, as I say, that's $97, and I'm happy to give that away to uh, someone tonight. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Nick. Uh, VA course, VA mini course, that will be brilliant, I'm sure. And the winner is Rod. Congratulations. That would be perfect for you, Rod. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, mm -hmm. that would be perfect. And Paul, you have something yes. to give away? I, I've got a course too that I've developed with another colleague and it's valued at $4.99. That's not $4.99. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we sell it at $49. And how many? There's seven here. I will give six copies of six of it away for free. Six, six copies of your course away. Yeah. Well, we've only got three people left who can win on on this particular uh, on this particular <laughs> Zoom. So well, that can't means anyone, can't anyone double up? I'll give one to everyone. One give, to, okay, so well, we give. give to, but I want give, to see the wheel spin again. It's nice. Okay, let's see. Okay, <laughs> let's see the wheel, the wheel spin. Well, if you give two to everyone, we can we can gift one. We can gift one on each of us. Oh, I see how it's uh, yeah. <laughs> Nick, congratulations. Well, for me. Awesome. So if you all put your email address and phone number in the chat for me, please, um, I'll send you a link and I'll, uh, I'll put um, the website um, 
awesome. URL in the chat. Yes. Uh, that will take you, you'll watch the um, introductory video and when you click the get started button, it takes you to uh, pay the $49 page, but I will send a link to you guys that bypasses that. Awesome, thank you so much, Paul. So I'll thank get you. that email address and phone number from you guys that I haven't met before. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that. And uh, Paul, now it's a bit hard for you to win your own prize. So um, you, you did actually win your own prize then, which was awesome. However, uh, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, so I will offer you a media strategy session with me as well. Okay. So thank you so much. for One we did the other day that went for three hours or something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll add to that. Alfred? Yes, Alfred. Uh, anyone want to sing a song with me? Ah, oh, there you go. If you want Everybody to sing a... loves my body sometimes. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Everybody loves your body sometimes. Well, there's, there's some, there's some extras. If, if, you show, oh, if you show that you sing it, you sung it to a loved one, you get a, you get a certificate. <laughs> Oh, I love it, Fred. Sing with Fred. Check him out. He's got a great YouTube channel too. Check out Alfred Zerfus. Please yeah. save the chat tonight. Thank you so much for your generosity with the prizes. And I just want to add a few points to what Nick was saying earlier. Some things I heard here tonight around the video marketing. It reminded me of Mike Keenies is a guy who I saw speak years ago. And he said a fantastic thing to do with your marketing and business with video marketing is to do 10 frequently asked question videos that go for up to three minutes and 10 should ask questions videos okay mm -hmm. so you could you could have 20 videos 20 promotional videos that if you did just short snippets of that and put it out on your social media and youtube etc it will it will do um, wonders for you as far as your seo your search engine optimization etc uh, across the board so thank you to mike kennings for that one i've always remembered that since i heard it about 10 years ago 10 frequently asked questions, 10 should ask questions. And they say if a photo is worth a thousand words, a video is worth a million words. Well, there's 25 yeah. photos every second in video. Wow, 25 photos every second. That is amazing. Yeah. And, and this is just a beautiful segue into our next Mass Media Tribe event, which is going to be on the 3rd of March, a date for your diary, 6 till 8 p.m. We have Carmen Braidwood. She's a TV and radio journalist from Perth who's going to be speaking to us about confidence on camera for business growth. Confidence on camera for business growth. So it's going to be an amazing event, 6 till 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, Queensland time on the 3rd of March, which is my mum's birthday, and I'll be spending it with you. So we'll have that promo up shortly. Make sure you follow Aldwin Alternate and Eventbrite to get all our upcoming event details. Uh, please connect with us at the Mass Media Tribe group on Facebook and on meet up as well. We've got free publicity secrets coming up on the 23rd of February from 9 to 1 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. And before we wrap up tonight, thank you so much, Nick, for being with us. You're amazing as always. And would anyone like to share any ahas, what they got out of tonight or something they're going to take on from here, some action steps they're going to take on from here to implement what they've learned tonight? What are some ahas? Can we just share from... Um, uh, now the chat now if you do want the chat you can save the chat or I can save it for you and send it to you if you um, if you would like that Mike's just asked yeah, for that just, so you just save the chat just go to the comments there and just save the chat there's a lot of great content in there thank you to everyone for sharing your, your links in the chat on the live zoom uh, it's wonderful to see that amazing networking happening here on, on this event. And thank you to all those watching this on Facebook as well. I've seen there's quite a few people making comments on Facebook as well. So thank you so much for watching. What are some ahas? What did we get out of tonight? Michael, would you like to share? Paul? Michael, I can see you both unmuted. So who would like to share? What did you get from tonight? Yes, Alfred, what did you uh, get? Using the web page to get emails. I didn't realize that. That was very important. Yes, that is gold. Use the web page to get emails. Absolutely. And put your phone number on your website so we can contact you because people oh. want things instantly and they want to talk to someone. They don't just want to get a bot. Mm. So, yes, excellent. Michael, what did you get? Um, just about using the, the website um, as a conversation, as a digital conversation. Um, I hope to talk to people um, because 
so few people talk to anybody anymore. Um, but um, it's really critical to to adjust the website so that it it does that. So when people go there, they feel they're in a conversation and they feel I can relate to this. Yes, absolutely. And and you know, if you have a virtual assistant, you could have that live chat, twenty four seven live chat that happens, of course, uh, which is also a great way to great, give customer service. But you know, you need people that are trained to be able to take those calls, not just send them to a, a robot, ideally. You know, mm. or, or automated answers. It drives me crazy when I get an automated answer, um, you know, messages on those twenty four seven chat lines. Uh, now, uh, excellent. Thank you for that, Michael. Who else would like to share? What did you get out of tonight? Anyone else? Angie's just dropped in the chat there. She can't speak now, but I uh, love your last bit about the frequently should ask questions. Yes. I already have ideas for blogs, lead magnets and vlogs. Thank you. So I love oh, that too. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. FAQs and yeah. SAQs. FAQs, SAQs. And FAQs yeah. would be really good done as a casual video. Yes. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Alfred. Uh, good night all. Lovely to be with you. I have to go now. Okay. Thank you, Alfred. Thank you for being with us. We are, we are wrapping up now. Send your email Any... and phone number. And if yes, you pop that. your email, phone yes. number in there so you get Paul's gift for you. Pop your... oh, yeah. But if you miss getting it into the chat, just email it to me. My, my email's in yeah. there. Yeah, we'll find Paul online um, and save the chat before we go. We all are. right. Well, uh, any any other comments, questions before we wrap up from anyone? Anyone dying to share anything? Awesome. Both Algren and Nick. Thank, Thank you. you, Paul. Thanks for having Thanks. me on. I've, uh, I've really enjoyed it. I always enjoy it when I'm, uh, I'm talking. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nick. And make sure you check out Nick's challenge next week. And his VA program is extraordinary. I've actually bought the VA program myself. So uh, he's, he's amazing with what he does. So definitely check Nick's workout. Go to Business Owner Smashing It Online as well and come and connect. Just Google us. You'll find us everywhere, right? Just connect. Connect on all the different social media channels that you're on, on LinkedIn. Subscribe to Media Queen TV. Um, you know, just, just Google us. You'll find us and stay connected. And if you want some free PR secrets, of course, 23rd of mm. February. Come along. And it's good. It's good. Good, good stuff. It's good. Paul was there. Rob was there. We had a few people that have seen the training. So uh, love you to come and join us. And hopefully you'll be inspired to go out and get some publicity for yourself mm. and inspired to share your message mm. with the world. Because you know, my wish for you is that you do shine bright. You light up those around you. Mm. We have the Good News Challenge, of course. You can participate in lots of ways that you can promote yourself in our community and outside of our community. So you know, proximity is power, as they say, proximity is power so surround yourself with amazing people up to big things in life and it will definitely help you get to where you want to go as well all right thank you so much for joining us we're going to wrap up now and we'll see you again at the next mass media tribe event if not sooner on the 3rd of february with carmen 3rd of march with carmen braidwood 3rd of march 6 till 8 p.m Australian Eastern Standard Time, talking about confidence on camera for business. That will be amazing. Paul's doing a selfie. Good on you, Paul. Please tag us. Please tag us. And I will share the photos I took tonight as well. Thank you once again, Nick. Thank you for attending. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. If you do like what you've seen, then share the love. Share the love. I have my love heart here. And remember, anything is possible for you. Any, this is my magic wand. Anything is possible for you and your life. Okay, it's just a matter of what you think about and think about, you will bring about, right? So get into that love and gratitude and you can attract amazing things into your life. Thank yeah, you very so much. Thank you very much for a great evening. Thank you. Thank My you. pleasure. Good thank night you. all. I'm thank you so much. In Sydney. Yes, yes. Well, good night. Sleep well. Ice cream, and no clock. <laughs> nice ice cream o'clock excellent perfect for the weight <laughs> for the, oh, for the I, had, I had a mouth of salad and a clam <laughs> oh, it's about balance, about balance. Yeah, yeah, exactly right <laughs> <laughs> fantastic thank you so much for joining right. us blessings Good to you time. lots right. of love and please stay connected and we'll see you at an event online soon awesome. thank you so much awesome. see you later bye for now